today we're going to be talking about how to do a partial fractions problem that requires us to make a rationalizing substitution. And what we mean by a rationalizing substitution is a substitution that gets rid of a square root sign. So in our particular integral, we have the square root of x plus 1 divided by x dx. And what we need to do is make a substitution that gets rid of the square root sign so that we can proceed to evaluate the integral using partial fractions. So our rationalizing substitution is going to be u equals the square root of x plus 1. We're going to set u equal to the square root of x plus 1. And as with, this is just a u substitution. So as with any u substitution, we're going to take the derivative of u, which we'll call du. Now keep in mind that u here, this square root of x plus 1 is the same as x plus 1 raised to the 1 half power. So taking the derivative of this is easy. We just use power rule with chain rule. We bring the 1 half out in front and we get 1 half times x plus 1 to the negative 1 half, multiplying by the derivative of the inside function x plus 1. Well, the derivative of x plus 1 is just 1, so essentially we multiply by 1. We don't have to write it. We do need to make sure we write a dx here because we'll want to solve for dx. So simplifying du a little bit, du equals this x plus 1 to the negative 1 half. If we move it to the denominator, it becomes a positive 1 half. So we get 1 over 2 times x plus 1 to now the positive 1 half dx. And we can now convert that back into a square root sign. So we end up with 1 over 2 times the square root of x plus 1 dx. Now to solve for dx, we'll just multiply both sides by 2 times the square root of x plus 1. And we'll get dx equals 2 times the square root of x plus 1 du. And we'll go ahead and make the substitution for dx in a second. So now that we have dx and now that we have a u, we can go ahead and substitute back into our original integral. So we called the square root of x plus 1 u. So we have u here divided by x. And we said that dx was equal to 2 times the square root of x plus 1 du. Now a couple things to note here. We still have a square root of x plus 1 and we still have an x. Well, the square root of x plus 1 is easy to get rid of. That's a u. We called it u up here in the beginning. So we'll put u there. For x, we need to go ahead and solve this equation up here for x. So when we do that, we'll solve this equation right here for x. We'll square both sides and we'll get u squared equals x plus 1. Then we'll subtract 1 from both sides and we'll see that x is equal to u squared minus 1. So now our integral becomes u divided by u squared minus 1 times 2u du. Simplifying this one, we'll pull the 2 out in front of the integral because it's a constant coefficient on this product inside here. So we'll get 2 times u squared divided by u squared minus 1 du. And what you can see now, you can see why it's called a rationalizing substitution. Because we went from an irrational function with a square root sign in it to a rational function. And this looks much closer to something that we can use partial fractions to evaluate. Now, if you're familiar with partial fractions, you'll remember that partial fractions only works if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. And in our case right now, the degree of our numerator and denominator are equal to each other. By degree, we mean the value of the highest exponent. And in both cases here in the numerator and denominator, we have a u squared and a u squared. That's the value of the highest exponent. So the degree of both numerator and denominator is 2. In order to solve this problem so that we can use partial fractions, we need to go ahead and perform long division with this fraction here. So we'll say u squared minus 1 going into u squared. If you remember your long division from elementary school, basically we need to figure out what to multiply by u squared minus 1 to get u squared. Well, we're really just looking at the first two terms here, u squared and u squared. We have to multiply u squared by 1 to get u squared. So we put the 1 up here, and then we multiply 1 by this out in front, and we get, of course, u squared minus 1. Now when we subtract this value from the u squared, we get u squared minus u squared, which is 0. And then we have essentially, if we put in a plus 0 here, we have 0 minus a negative 1 is 0 plus 1. So we get a positive 1 here. Now that's our remainder term. So we'll get 1 plus 1 over 
u squared minus 1, our original denominator. So now this is what we can plug into our integral. We'll get 2 times the integral of 1 plus 1 over u squared minus 1 du. Now we can break this up into two separate integrals. We'll get 2 times the integral of 1 du plus 2 times the integral of 1 over u squared minus 1 du. The first integral just becomes 2u. Obviously, the integral of 1 is just u, so we get 2u. Then we get plus 2 times the integral. Now, if we factor the denominator, what we'll see is we get the integral of 1 divided by u plus 1 times u minus 1 du. And now we can see clearly that we have a partial fractions problem with distinct linear factors. Both u plus 1 and u minus 1 are linear factors, and they're distinct from one another. They're different. So that just means that our partial fractions problem, and we can't forget we have to come back to this piece right here, but right now we're just going to focus on our fraction that's inside of our integral. So what we're going to get is 1 over u plus 1. We're going to do our partial fractions decomposition now. So we'll take our fraction, we'll set that equal to a over the first factor, u plus 1, plus b over the second factor, u minus 1. Now keep in mind that if you have repeated factors, then your decomposition looks different. And if you have quadratic factors, your decomposition looks different. This decomposition only works for distinct linear factors. And I have lots and lots of videos on my website and on YouTube about partial fractions problems and the difference between distinct and repeated quadratic and linear factors. So to keep going with this problem, we'll multiply both sides of this equation here by u plus 1 times u minus 1. And when we do that, the denominator on the left-hand side will cancel. We'll get 1 equals the u plus 1 factor will cancel when we multiply it by this fraction here with the a, and we'll be left with a times u minus 1. For b, the u minus 1 factor will cancel and we'll be left with b times u plus 1. When we multiply this out here, we get a u minus a plus b u plus b. And then when we group our terms together on the right hand side, we want to group all of our degree terms together. So we have a first degree u term here in a u and a first degree u term here in b u. We want to group those together negative a and b are constants, we want to group those together. So we'll get 1 equals au plus bu plus negative a plus b. And now we want to go ahead and factor out a u. So we'll get 1 equals a plus b times u plus negative a plus b. And this is just the method of equating coefficients. Because over here on the right hand side, essentially we have 0u plus 1. Because we have 0u on the left hand side, and we have a coefficient of a plus b on the u on the right hand side, that means that a plus b has to equal 0. Because we have a constant of 1 on the left hand side, and a constant of negative a plus b on the right hand side, that means that negative a plus b has to equal 1. Now we can solve these using simultaneous equations. We'll take this second equation here, we'll add a to both sides, and we'll get b equals 1 plus a. Then we'll take 1 plus a and we'll plug it in for b into our first one here. We'll get a plus 1 plus a equals 0. And when we simplify that, we'll get 2a plus 1 equals 0. 2a equals negative 1, a equals negative 1 half. And now that we have a, we can plug that into this equation we have for b. So we'll get b equals 1 minus 1 half, b therefore equals positive 1 half. So now we have values for a and b, and we can plug those back in to our partial fractions decomposition here. And this value right here is going to go into the integral for this fraction instead. Okay, so now we'll plug a and b into this partial fraction c composition here, and we'll get negative 1 half over u plus 1 plus 1 half over u minus 1, just plugging in the values for a and b. 
this now is going to replace this fraction that we have here inside of our integral. So we'll get 2u plus 2 times the integral of negative 1 half over u plus 1 plus 1 half over u minus 1 du. At this point we can split up our integrals so we'll get 2u plus 2 times the integral of negative 1 half over u plus 1 du plus 2 times the integral of 1 half over u minus 1 du. We'll pull a 1 half out of both of them. We'll get 2 times a negative 1 half is just a negative 1, so we'll get negative integral of 1 over u plus 1 du. Then we'll pull a 1 half out of this one, and we'll get plus positive 1 times the integral of 1 over u minus 1 du. We can easily integrate these now. We know that the integral of 1 over something is natural log of that same thing, so we get 2u minus natural log of the absolute value of u plus 1 plus natural log of the absolute value of u minus 1 plus c. We have to remember to account for that constant of integration. Now we can back substitute for 1, so we'll get 2u minus natural log of u, we said, was the square root of x plus 1, so we'll get square root of x plus 1 plus 1 plus the natural log of the absolute value of the square root of x plus 1 minus 1 plus c. Now a couple things here, we're also going to need to back substitute for this u, which I just forgot to do. But the natural log terms, we could either leave as they are, but when you have one natural log minus another natural log, you can turn them into a fraction if you want to, with the positive natural log being the numerator and the negative natural log being the denominator. So when we back substitute for this u right here, we'll get 2 square root of x plus 1. And then for the natural log terms, we'll get plus natural log of the absolute value. The positive natural log goes in the numerator, so x plus 1 minus 1 here. And then the negative natural log goes in the denominator, so square root of x plus 1 plus 1 here, and then just our plus c. And that's it. That's how we use a rationalizing substitution to evaluate a partial fractions problem. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.